Hare Krishna. You have been commenting on several movies recently. So do you watch the movies that you comment on? Answer depends. My purpose is to respond to whatever concerns are relevant in the issues raised by the movie. So, for example, I have written two books on movies which were Bollywood satires on religion. That was OMG and PK, as I wrote in 2011 and 2014, approximately. So, those, the books, the movies narrative itself was such that it brought several questions. Some of them were logical, but some of them, many of them were blanket generalizations as accusations against religion. So initially at that time, I answered the questions, some of them without watching the movie. But then I realized that the questions didn't just have a, a logical side to them, but also an emotional uh, storyline, which brought those questions together. So therefore I decided to watch the movie after consulting with senior devotees about whether it was relevant. But apart from that, for movies, which I'm not, so much concerned with the logical issues that they are raised. I, I don't need to watch the movies. So for example, I've commented on Bahubali, I've commented, commented on R, RRR. So basically there I've talked about how they are depicting themes from Indian tradition. And this I can gather just by reading the reviews. I can gather by reading about the storyline from Wikipedia. And I asked some of my friends who and relatives who watch movies quite regularly to get a sense of the emotional tenor. So I will not call my comments as reviews of those movies because a review has to be holistic. You have to look at the video, at the visual quality, the, at a lot of factors which are not of relevance to me immediately. So recently the Kashmir Files <clears throat> was the movie on which I commented. My video on it was also called Reflections. So that was a movie I did watch because the whole impact of the movie was, there was not just logical questions over there. There was a very human story, which was relevant to the threat to dharma that is very much present in today's world, especially given the attack on devotees in Bangladesh also recently. So the point is that I... It depends on what my purpose is. So in general, I am much more a verbal person than a visual person. If given a choice between reading a book and watching a movie, I would very much prefer reading a book. And if at all, I want to know what is happening in a movie, I would much, much rather prefer to see the, read the script and the screenplay rather than watch the whole movie. Generally, even documentaries, I prefer to watch with two screens so that I can be typing my comments. I find watching movies, watching the visual movement quite passive at times. With respect to books, you know, our mind, our intelligence, our consciousness has to, the opportunity to create the world based on the words that we are getting. But with respect to movies, the world is already created by the director and by the movie <clears throat> people. And we are just being fed the uh, world that is being created. So I don't find it sufficiently engaging. Beyond that, it can be quite distracting. So my purpose is to primarily comment on spiritual connections or Vedic connections that might be there in the movie. And if it is required, only then I will watch the movie. Otherwise, based on gleaning the relevant information that I need, I may make some comments. And of course, as a matter of principle, my understanding is that we all have to do as much as possible to try to spiritualize our consciousness. And each of us uh, can get distracted in various ways. And just because XYZ is doing something, we shouldn't take that as a license for ourselves doing things. Because uh, we have to see what is the effect on our consciousness. And then accordingly, we have to decide. Generally, before starting the service of commenting on movies, I've consulted with senior devotees who, who regularly I am connected with, I'm accountable to. And based on that, I decide when to comment on, how to comment on. And in general, Krishna consciousness is not one zero. But if you consider 
we can see Krishna everywhere. As I mentioned in some of my talks, Prabhupada was once in an airport and saw Charlie Chaplin movie and he said Charlie Chaplin's humor is original. It is manifesting Krishna's vibhuti, a spark of Krishna's splendor. So we can see Krishna everywhere. But do we need to see Krishna in things which are much more likely to take us away from Krishna? So the idea is that for us, we need to focus on seeing Krishna directly where he is manifested in scripture, in the temples, in the association of devotees. At the same time, we cannot live in the world with closed eyes. So where our eyes and our minds are going, by ours means in general of society. So how can Krishna be seen over there also? Some pointers for that can be given through these comments that I'm making. And in general, we have to ourselves introspect. Do I need to do this as a service? Can I do this safely as a service? Is this service being effective? It depends. So Bhakti Sansa Thakur times, movies were not that common. But in the Gaudiya Journal at that time, they would read various books, contemporary books, uh, those time contemporary. And they would do reviews of those books from uh, the Gaudiya perspective. So that was one way of connecting with society, connecting with what society was reading, what society was being exposed to, and helping them see it from a spiritual perspective. So this is my purpose in doing it. And generally, the fulfilling this purpose does not require me to watch the movie. And only if it requires, then very cautiously, I'll do that. Thank you.